Geegan Channel. It's Andy O'Reilly, and today I'm down at Hackley's ER. We're in the conference room of the ER. Heather Ruffin is a new face to here, and you guys know Holly all the way by now. We are here to talk about National Stop the Bleed Day, which is a day I didn't even know was a thing until Heather got a hold of me here. And I don't know a lot about it yet, to be honest with you. So we're going to let the professionals talk about it. Heather, tell me a little bit about Stop the Bleed Day and why it's important. Why it's important is because, as we've seen in our current climate, um, massive shootings are on the rise, and you it's know, scary. it is scary. You know, we we all have kids or grandkids in school, and it's just terrifying to think of something happening in in their school. Um, Stop the bleed developed out of um, the incidences that happened at Columbine, that happened at Sandy Hook. Um, a surgeon was put on standby to expect several children from the Sandy Hook shooting and none of them showed. They all died. And it's a small community. He also had to do the autopsies for these mm. children. And that, it can't help but affect you. And he said there has to be a way to, to do something about this, to prevent something like this from happening again. And the something that happened is that a large majority of those children that died, died from extremity wounds, bleeding out from extremity wounds that could have been um, taken care of with things like tourniquets tourniquet being available. Or, or a makeshift belt. Sure. Or anything that you could have grabbed on hand. And, and one of the things we work for here is to, to stay away from the, the big, scary sensationalism stuff. But mm -hmm. an injury like this doesn't have to come from a shooting. No. It can come from uh, a cut. It can come mm -hmm. from a household injury. It can come from a number of things. We get them from shops, yeah. from people working in shops. We get them from people working in cars. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's actually a common injury. We use several tourniquets. Lawnmower, yeah. weed eater, yeah. chainsaw, oh, yeah. you, I, snow you, blowers. You name it. Yeah, so yeah. it's not just a school shooting no. thing that we're here to talk no. about. We're talking about overall safety and making sure you know a little bit of the first things to do before a first responder can get there. Yeah. And you're offering a class about this thing, which is a great mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And it's free. It's free. Let's talk about the class that's coming so up. So it's March 31st, which is Saturday. Okay. It is 11 to 1 in the Youngberg Auditorium here at Hackley. And what it is, is it's two hours of learning how to identify a life-threatening bleed, um, what to do to take care of that bleed. It empowers you with the knowledge to um, be able to utilize what you have on you, what you have available to use to stop the bleed. And it also um, advocates for getting kits out in the community and public places so that the supplies that you really need are available when you need them. All right, so we, we want people to come to the class. We'll mm -hmm. put some registration links and all that other kind of stuff up here on, on the Muskegon channel, but give me the, give me the quick fast of it. If, if somebody's bleeding heavily, mm -hmm. What's the first thing that they want to look for? The first thing want, they want to do is make sure it's safe for them. They okay. want to make sure it's safe to approach. If it's a car crash or if there was an explosion or there was somebody hit by a car, they need to make sure it's safe first for them to go and sure. help. They want sure. to make sure that you know they're okay. Once that's happening, they need to let the person know that they're there to help, that they're there to um, take care of, this, of, of their injury. Um, then you need to look for the injury. So they need to take off the clothes, which can be uncomfortable. We teach high school kids this as well. We say, you know, it's uncomfortable. You need to know where the injury is at because just because you see blood in one place doesn't mean that's where the blood's coming sure. from. Once you identify the injury, you want to put pressure on the injury because yeah. oftentimes that's all you need to do is just put some good pressure on the injury and that will help stop the bleed. If that's not helping, then you want to pack the wound. So we talk about them using what they have on them, their shirts their socks, bandanas, um, whatever they have available. Gauze is always the ideal, sure. but people just don't always have it. You know, we don't worry about infection because it's life or death. We can treat an infection, we can't treat you if you bleed out. Um, and then if you can't um, pack it uh, with something that's still bleeding, then we advocate to go the tourniquet route. This is really our last resort. It is. It's a scary thing. I mean, a couple of years ago where I live, we had a car that went off the road and went right into an apartment building mm -hmm. right behind my house. And I was like the first one on the scene. And as I walked up there, I looked at the, I looked at the, the accident scene and all that. And this woman was bleeding. She had, you know, some facial bleeding going on. And mm -hmm. it's, it's awkward to walk up to somebody that's just been through a situation like that and, and say, Ooh. Hey, what happened in here? And you know, you gotta you gotta really keep your wits about you. Is that something that you guys talk about in this class as well? Yeah. To not exacerbate the situation by walking up there and freaking out. We do. We uh, talk to them very heavily about um, staying calm, of talking to the person. Um, talking to them in a calm voice is is almost better than pain medication. Right. You know, you, we employ it when they come in as traumas in the ER. Sometimes I'll just 
sit there and talk to them because if you're calm, they're going to be calm. And letting them know that what you're going to do is going to hurt. Right. You know, packing a wound or putting the, tour the tourniquet on, it's going to hurt. And so just telling them what you're going to do before you do it is also very helpful. A big deal. Now, this, ha this has another level as well. Um, there's some legislation that's that you're on your way to Lansing I mean mm -hmm. to talk about tell me tell me about this legislation that's in front of our, our state legislature mm -hmm. and tell me the, the, the what you're going to be down there doing okay so Michigan is one of only two states in the country that does not have permanent trauma system funding and what a state utilizes its trauma system for is getting the right patients to the right hospitals at the right time some people think of every ER is a trauma center and that's not true. Trauma centers are verified by um, an age, either the state or the American College of Surgeons that it has all of the tools in place, the resources in place that are needed to take care of a trauma patient, um, surgeons that are available at your bedside immediately, things like that. Um, and we don't have that funding. We have funding through crime victims, which sunsets in October, and there is a bill currently being proposed right now to make the system funding permanent and so we really advocate um, for people to contact their legislators and support this funding because without that funding you know we won't have a system and it's kind of embarrassing that Michigan is is the last on board to it and it's so important it really is so important it's scary stuff trauma is the leading cause of death in people ages 1 to 44 wow. it's more than cancer it's more than HIV it's more than infectious disease it is the number one killer and we need to treat it like a disease and if we don't have a system in place that can care for that disease the system's gonna fall apart yeah scary stuff mm -hmm. give me give me the times again on, on, on the class coming up so the class coming up is March 31st from 11 to 1. Okay. Um, we'll post the link that people can register through. There are other classes coming down the pike yep. um, that people can register for. This isn't the first one and this isn't the last one. Uh, Mercy Health really is leading West Michigan and putting these classes out to the community. Yeah. Um, Mercy and does a lot and we do a lot with Mercy. I mean, that's why you see Holly so much. You yeah. Don't talk so much, would you? I know, I know. Well, Holly's <laughs> got great information, so. <laughs> you know, we're always doing something with Ally or through the Health Project or something. It's always an outreach and we, we thank Mercy for being a, a big sponsor of everything we do. We can't thank you guys enough. So back to your story. Sorry, didn't oh, yeah. interrupt. She's been critical at getting these classes organized, getting them put together. If anybody has a group that wants to have a class, they can definitely contact myself or Holly, and we okay. can get a class put together for them. And then April 26th, we're leading a rally in Lansing with the American College of Surgeons, with Michigan Committee on Trauma, to advocate for the bill. We're going to be teaching representatives how to utilize this um, these supplies and these materials. And so, yeah, contact your legislators also. All the links will be right here on the Muskegon channel. There's always great work going on at Mercy Health. And if you can, I mean, it's like CPR. It's like knowing the Heimlich maneuver. It's like knowing any of these basic life-saving things that you can get your hands around. It's an important thing to know and, and to know you guys are doing this class coming up on the 31st. It's a big deal. Yeah. Our goal is to have Stop the Bleed kits mounted next to every AED in the community. That is our ultimate true north goal because it is like first aid um, in, in CPR. You do need to have this stuff available. And so these are kits that we put together that some of our attendees um, can get or can purchase at a discount, not from us, we're not selling them, sure. um, but they we can give them the, the vendor that sells them. And Scissors, there's also gloves, mounted kits. Gauze, yep. all that kind of stuff. Turning kits, markers, a card that tells you how to, how to do it, sure. everything they learn in the class. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Great work. Yeah. You're, you're like you're like a new media superstar. Oh. Did yeah. you see that coming today when you got up? Oh, no. How about that? <laughs> Holly, you got this, you know, hands down. So you know you can get a hold of us anytime. Now that you're now that you know me, you can get a hold of us anytime. Mm -hmm. Great work. All the links are here. If you want to know how to save a life through Stop the Bleed, follow those links right here and come on down on the thirty first to Mercy Health and learn a little bit about saving a life. Holly, Heather, thank you guys. Thank you. Best of luck in Lansing. Tell me how thank it is. I, I might end up there myself. I, I hear something about that. Yeah, we, we'll have to wait and see, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All the details are right here on the Muskegon Channel, Stop the Bleed. That's the, uh, that's the program coming up. Yeah.